20,000 bucks a minute, $10.3 billion last year. That's the amount of public money, our taxes, being transferred in subsidies by the federal government and the state governments to multinational coal companies. 20,000 bucks a minute. Pre-COVID, the government was spending about 10.2 billion on unemployment benefits. So all you job seekers that received that magnanimous increase of $3.57 a day in job seeker, you can be happy in the knowledge that $20,000 a minute is going to multinational coal and oil and gas companies. Chief Economist at the Australia Institute, Rod Campbell, has penned a story for us on the TAI report about coal and oil and gas subsidies in Australia. Rod Campbell and his colleagues found that $10.3 billion was the amount state and federal governments subsidised the coal and oil and gas industries in one year, and longer term projects amounting to about $8 billion in public subsidies. While we pay 42.7 cents per litre in taxes when we fill the car up, they received 7.82 billion in fuel tax subsidies, in tax concessions. You could have a stab at which government is the purveyor of the greatest amount of corporate welfare. It's the federal government. And in second spot comes the Queensland government. Besides fuel rebates, which is federal government, we have subsidies for ports, rail infrastructure, for exploration. New South Wales is the lowest of the states, Queensland the biggest. Last week, Prime Minister Scott Morrison fronted the world to tell everybody about Australia's progress on the carbon reduction front. The emphasis was on technology, how Australia planned a technological solution. Of course, one of the key technologies here is carbon capture and storage, or clean coal as its moniker. This is perennially paraded as new technology, at the vanguard of the fight against emissions. But of course, this is 20 years old. We remember having the debate about this in, in newsrooms 10 years ago. The issue is commercial reality. They're not cost effective. They cost too much. Meanwhile, the cost of renewable energy continues to plunge while they're still fiddling around, talking about carbon capture and storage. John Hewson put it well the other day, the best form of carbon capture and storage, he said, was just leaving the stuff in the ground. Among these initiatives, New South Wales has a $100 million coal innovation fund. Now the government paid Deloitte $250,000 to do an independent experts report investigating the viability of CCS, of carbon capture and storage, as if this hadn't been established globally many years ago. Deloitte did the report, but of course the report has not seen the light of day because the findings were that it would cost New South Wales $16 billion to develop carbon capture and storage. Who was the minister responsible? The Deputy Premier of New South Wales, John Barillaro. It's important to stress the point that this $10 billion subsidy per year is a transfer of wealth or represents a transfer of wealth going from our pockets to the pockets of shareholders of mostly multinational companies that pay little or no tax. The oil and gas sector, Exxon, Chevron, Shell, these companies pay virtually no tax. In the case of Exxon, $50 billion in income in Australia, zero tax. So when you see a current affair, or the Murdoch press do a story on dole bludgers, on welfare bludgers, bear in mind that the biggest, most accomplished welfare bludgers of all are multinational fossil fuel companies. So we put questions to our friends at the Minerals Council of Australia, asking them what they thought about this report from the Australia Institute about this $10 billion subsidy. We're yet to hear back. Like this video if you'd like to see robo debt for corporate welfare bludgers. Please leave a message and I'll get back to you shortly. Oh, good day, Peter. Just Michael West here. Just chasing up a response from the Minerals Council on the TAI report and the $10 billion in subsidies to coal 
and other fossil fuel companies. If you could get back to us, that'd be terrific. Thank you.